Hello everyone, in this video let us use a Jira's REST API to fetch the list of uh, issue links. So we made a video on this topic previously where we discussed how to create an issue link and we also made a video on uh, how to fetch the issue details using a REST API. Now I wanted to talk about this topic because uh, you can also fetch the issue links and only issue links for a specific uh, issue ID. Uh, no, not issue ID but for a specific issue link ID. Now let me tell you what I mean by this. Now imagine that you're looking at one of the issue. Let us say it is a uh, it is a story. It could be any issue basically in Jira and right now the issue key that we are looking at is uh, CTS-12. Now this issue has uh, two links. One is uh, MA6 which is uh, I believe uh, outward link and the other one is uh, Scrum 8 which is inward link. Now if I go to <coughs> my talent API tester and if I click on, I'm basically trying to fetch the issue. So using the REST API 3 issues slash uh, CTS 12, let us let us fetch the whole issue, which is uh, CTS 12. I can get the details of this issue. A lot of inf information here. But the information that I'm interested in is uh, the issue link. Uh, which is uh, this particular part. Now, since this issue has uh, two links, it will give you, uh, f it will basically have two entries under this uh, issue link. Uh, the first one is uh, the inward issue, which is uh, Scrum 8. So basically it says that Scrum 8 blocks the uh, let me check let me check and uh, read it for you so scrum 8 basically is uh, or, or rather I, I should say this particular issue cts 12 is blocked by scrum 8 so on the cts 12 issue the uh, the name that you will see uh, is uh, uh, blocked by uh, and uh, you can immediately figure out that this is uh, blocked by because uh, when you of course go to this particular issue you will see is blocked by and it means that uh, scrum uh, 8 is blocking this issue uh, but when you're looking at this response here you will have this entry called inward issue so it means that this particular issue scrum 8 is uh, is coming to this cts 12 and uh, when it is inward issue, you can uh, take a look at the inward part of this link. Now, this is good. You can see here, I mean, by looking at this information, you can immediately figure out that uh, the issue link ID is uh, 10052. And for each and every link, it could be from CTS 12 to Scrum 8 or Scrum 8 to CTS 12. So between two issues, there is a link and this link will have this unique ID. Now this is fine. You can take a look at the inward issue, which is a scrum 8. At the same time for the other issue, we can immediately see that it is outward because there is an entry for outward issue. And if you expand it further, you can uh, read further that this is clones. So basically it says that CTS 12 clones MA six which is of course uh, you can also verify here so this is of course quite useful and uh, interesting but if you just use the issue id here let us say 10052 or 10053 and you basically use another endpoint called rest api3 slash issue link and then you pass the issue link id so if you if you hit this uh, endpoint you can see the same information but 
it will uh, uh, not just be focused on one side of the link. So usually there is a link between two issues. One issue is linked to another issue or another issue is linked by uh, the other issue. And this link ID will tell you exactly that. So it, it of course, you can first take a look at uh, the inward description and the outward description, which is of course listed here. But if you want to find out uh, what exactly is inward and outward, you can take a look at this part here. So inward is of course uh, Scrum 8 and outward is uh, CTS 12. So you can immediately fill these values. So you can say here that uh, uh, inward is uh, Scrum 8. So Scrum 8, uh, if you look at the page itself, so Scrum 8 is uh, basically, if you go to the Scrum 8, let us go to the Scrum 8 and uh, this is of course my subtask, it could be an issue type. Now here it says this blocks CTS 12. Uh, so Scrum 8 blocks CTS 12 and uh, it means that from Scrum 8 there is a link going out to CTS 12 and uh, this is how you should you know try to uh, relate how it works so scrum from scrum 8 there is a link uh, going out to CTS 12 and if you're looking at uh, uh, CTS 12 there is a link coming from CTS uh, from uh, Scrum 8. So this is uh, basically the you know relation that you can see here by looking at the link and only the link. And of course we are doing it for 10052. We can also do it for the other one, which is uh, clone. So you can see here that uh, the issue says here that uh, if you go back to the CTS 12 so it says let us let us click on uh, MA 6 so it says MA 6 is cloned by CTS 12 and CTS 12 is the uh, clone cloning or clones uh, MA 6 so basically from CTS uh, CTS 12, there is a link going out. So if you go back to the, uh, if you go back to the, uh, I, uh, to the issue link. So from CTS 12, there is a link going uh, out, and the link is going to MA6. So uh, this is something that I wanted to cover because uh, usually people get confused when it comes to issue links it can be a bit uh, it can take you know some time in the beginning to understand the concept of inward link and outward link and how to relate it when you are using of course uh, when you're trying to do something programmatically it could be rest api or it could be your own add-on or it could be your script runner if you are using script runner for example uh, because these things are of course common because we are working with the APIs. It could be Java API or it could be the Jira REST API. So I hope I hope you are enjoying this uh, series on uh, mastering Jira REST API. My whole point of creating these uh, videos was to basically explain how you can do automation in Jira using REST API and uh, how you can also play with the REST API using the API tester plugin. You can also use any tool. I'm sure there are a lot of tools that will let you interact with your uh, endpoints. Uh, and you can keep you can keep a list of uh, all the endpoints that you want to use or you want to basically have them handy. For example, in the talent API tester, I have the, the list the list of different things that you can do with the REST API and whenever I have to do something I can of course uh, take a look at the documentation where I can take a look at the reference uh, the whole reference documentation but 
it makes much more sense when you actually are able to play with it. So when you're able to play with it, it is extremely easy to write code for it uh, using, of course, any language of your uh, of your choice. So I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.